A couple years ago, we covered the Grand Power LP380, the full size double stack 380, kind of a unique size caliber combo, and YouTube apparently took those videos down. So today we're redoing them, bringing them back. Grand Power LP380, tabletop review and field strip, coming up next on GB Guns. When most people think about 380s, they think of little things like this Devenbeck DB380 looking extra big with the Crimson Trace laser on it, but little pocket guns in a pocket caliber. This one, interestingly enough, isn't direct blowback, uh, but really small gun, very thin, very limited capacity and feature set. Works with the caliber, but doesn't take the caliber to its fullest. What if you could have a bigger gun with a longer barrel get more energy, more control. That's what the Grimpire LP380 is. Now the manual unfortunately has either been misplaced or I had the wrong one in here from the get-go, so we won't be going over that. The manual that came in this case is for a 22. Got a ground power sticker and the Global Ordnance sticker. Global Ordnance is now the importer of these guys, has been for a number of years. The example that we have here is an older one from when they were with Eagle Imports, but it's the same gun essentially. You also get two different front sight posts of different height. The front sight cut on these is CZ75 pattern, but there is a little cut. I don't know if it's gonna come through in the camera. A little tiny cut for the roll pin that goes, or a cross pin that holds them in place. So if you swap on a CZ75 sight, you'll need to know uh, that you might have to grind that spot. You also get a bore brush. Down below the gun, a second 15 round magazine. These are the same dimensions as the Grand Power 9mm magazines. They did what many companies have done and just put a spacer in there since 380 is two millimeters shorter of case length than 9mm is. That keeps you with a familiar mag body, it means it'll fit your 9mm mag holsters, things like that, mag carriers, just as easily, but the rounds won't rattle around. You also get a total of four back straps, three more in the case and one on the gun. YouTube won't let me show you swapping those because YouTube thinks that's gunsmithing or building a gun. However, I can show you some overlaid images later in this video of how they changed the hand fitment for me. Let's get this stuff out of the way and take a look at the LP380. Those of you familiar with the Grand Power line might be thinking that this looks an awful lot like my personal favorite and carry gun, the K100. And that's because it is essentially the same gun pretty much the same size, although this has a longer barrel, and uh, exact same frame, even has the billet steel chassis inside, keeping that trigger impeccable. Practically identical guns, other than this being a direct blowback, and the K100 having Grand Power's unique rotating barrel system. I believe that this is direct blowback, simply because 380 might not have enough energy to cycle a rotating barrel, I'm not sure. I do know the, the Grand Power Roxor, which I got to see but not shoot when I visited Grand Power, does have a rotating barrel and is in 380, but that's a longer one. That's sort of their equivalent of the Xcal five inch barrel type deal. But so if you're looking for an alternative to the 9mlk 100, the LP380 fits that bill perfectly. Drop the mag using the Ambi mag release, and that's why I love. Ambidextrous magazine releases. Though I can reach this with my thumb, oftentimes that requires me shifting my grip to get access to it. And as you can see, the mag release is nicely shielded by that contour there to keep it from getting bumped. The one on the other side for my middle finger is a very easy thing to hit. Good ejection there. We'll lock the slide back, show empty, and check for magazine ejection versus release. And like all Grand Powers, we've got plenty of ejection keeping that magazine out. You might have noticed already, all controls are ambidextrous. That's something that on all 19 of the Grand Power models that I've reviewed has remained true. It's not just for lefties, folks. If you are a serious user and want to train both hands, train for backup, train for an injured right hand or injured left hand, etc., Grand Powers, you just swap hands and all the controls are right where they're supposed to be. And as you can see, put all my fingers down here so I'm not milking it. The slides top and release works as it should 
on the other side. That's a feat that some manufacturers have fallen short at. All right, now we'll come in for our standard look around the gun. Camera, stay with us, there we go. We've got a little bit of beveling here to help with holstering. And this does fit K100 holsters, so long as they're not too snug across the top of the slide. You notice that the slide design is a little bit different between the two. Part of that is so that there can be mass for the slide since it is a direct blowback. One rail slot, texturing on the front of the trigger guard for those who like to grip there, as well as a ledge. So definitely a good pistol for folks who like that support finger up front type grip. Got a decent radius here. Uh, it races all the way around. I've used Grand Powers at multiple high round count multi-day courses and not ended up with too much Glock knuckle from them. I can't say it's the smoothest I've ever seen, but it's certainly better than a lot of other guns out there. Texturing on the front strap is horizontal as it should be. That's because the gun's gonna try to rock this way. So, good call there. A little bit of a toe kick that keeps the hand out of the way and makes it safe to shove a mag in without risking pinching yourself, which is very nice. You can also see that if your hands are even bigger than mine, that you've got ledge here uh, to put leverage on the bottom of the magazine to help control muzzle flip. Very nicely done. No real beveling underneath uh, for magwell, but double stack single feed mag effectively is your magwell. That's simple science, folks. Um, I don't know when that's going to stick, but eventually someone's going to catch it. Our back strap, and you notice the three additionals that come with it, covers the sides as well. So it changes three dimensions of the gun when you change those back straps. The texturing is there. It's not the grippiest. Uh, I've shot them while sweaty. I've shot them in the rain. And it could be more aggressive. I wouldn't call it a slippery gun, but it's certainly not something super aggressive. What I do like about it is... For holster use, the side rubbing against your skin is not exfoliating you as it happens. And as I rub my dry finger across it, you can see it's not gumming up or packing up with dead skin cells, etc., like a lot of the more aggressive textures do. This is a safety only model, up for safe, locks the trigger, but not the action, down for fire, pretty simple. Uh, you'll notice there are a couple different looking safety things through the years that Grand Power uses. I've got a guide to that in the Grand Power Pistol Guide article. That'll be linked in the uh, description and as a pinned comment. That's also where you can find all your specs on this thing, pricing and where to find one. While we're in this close, let's take a look at that trigger. And this is one of my favorite bits of Grand Powers. Our single action. We've got a spring-loaded short take up to a wall and a break. <laughs> That's it. Very much like a nice 1911, maybe a little bit heavier to keep it responsible, but otherwise nice. Reset right back to where it broke. And as I pull again, I'm still on that wall. There's no retake up for a break again. This is double action capable should you get around to fire, uh, fail to fire, which does happen with some 380s. I don't know if it's that companies don't put as much effort into the 380 ammo or simply that we tend to abuse 380 ammo more, but you do have a second strike capability. The double action pull is heavy, but it's a consistent weight that goes straight through. And when I took a course with my decocker K100, uh, I ran it decocked. So first shot out of the holster every time was double action. And it's because it's such a consistent pull, it's very easy to learn how to do that smoothly and controlled without jerking the gun around. It's a, it's a nice double action. Going around in the back, we see our slide to frame fit. It's tight up front. Pretty darn tight. We have a little bit of play here, but nothing's happening up here. This is just a dust cover. That's why it's called that. Give you a look at our sight picture. Three dot white sights, or three white dot sights. The uh, additional sights that come in the gun adjust your height here in case you've got specialty ammo that's hitting high or low, and then it comes with an Allen screw to be able to adjust your rear sight for any windage as needed. And once again, you can fit CZ75 front sights on ground powers. It just sometimes takes a little work to grind a spot for that cross pin that is what holds it in place. 
Next we'll field strip the LP380 and take a look inside the gun. As I get ready to do that, just want to think out loud. I'm curious about chronographing this 4.66 inch barrel and seeing what we can get out of 380. Now, 380 is generally seen as the minimum caliber for good defensive use that some people are still kind of cautious of and say, why not just go with 9mm? And unfortunately these days 9mm is cheaper. I mean, it's bad for the 380 fans. But I think when people think the 380 doesn't do much, they're thinking about these pocket guns, not a 4.66 inch barrel. So maybe if you guys are interested, uh, let us know in the comment section. When we test this, we'll also chrono it against a shorter barrel with a couple different loads and just take a look at the energy difference to see if this makes 380 more viable for those who like power. All right, so field stripping the ground powers. This one, even though it's a fixed barrel, comes apart and goes together just like the rotating barrel ones, meaning you have to take the slide all the way to the rear, lift up, and bring it forward to come off, just like on a Walther PBK or on a Makarov type deal. I like to hook my middle finger in here, pull down on the takedown tabs with, from both sides, and I usually do this with the heel of the gun butted up against my chest, so sometimes it's hard to do on camera. Um, if you guys don't know, my camera, my filming situation has this gun about two feet in front of me. Let's see if I can do it here. Back, up, forward and off. There you go. It is not a captive spring. It just gets kind of wedged in there. And is color-coded, flat wire spring. Color coding makes me wonder if there are other options out there for hotter or colder loads. As we take a look inside this thing, it looks extra shiny. That's because, well, we've already reviewed this, shot it a few times, put it away, and it wasn't until I was working on that article that I realized YouTube had deleted my videos. So I recleaned it. But you can see that our friction points are super slick, nice, polished, stainless, and there's not much extra in this gun whatsoever. Slide's got good heft to it, as it needs to for blowback, to uh, keep things safe and also reduce recoil. You may also notice that there is not a drop safety in this thing. So, something to keep in mind. If uh, I would not carry this decocked, I'd carry it cocked and locked. So, that's way to do it. Um, down here, you see our steel chassis. This chassis starts as a piece of billet stainless and then gets machined, and then everything assembled. And it's for some reason. I'm having trouble seeing them, but that spot there is where the smith who assembles it tacks his initials, much like you'd see on a Nighthawk. Uh, Grand Power's been doing that for a long time. I think of it as pretty darn good accountability. If something's wrong with the assembly, they know who did it. <laughs> so <laughs> when you sit in a warranty complaint, um, somebody might be getting a nasty gram the next day at work. But fixed barrel, you can see we've got nice polished feed ramp in the chassis and in the barrel as well. And I noticed when putting the mag in that the presentation height of the magazine skips over quite a bit of that feed ramp to begin with. So you almost have room for error in case a fudgy 380 round wants to nosedive or something. It's still going to hit feed ramp uh, and be reliable. We don't have match ammo to do chamber, uh, chamber support check, but we do have something pretty darn close. This uh, Liberty Civil Defense. We recently tested um, in the SIG 365s, and I was very, very impressed with it. As you can see, it is lovingly made. This uh, this ain't ain't no cheap ammo. So we're gonna use that to take a look at it. I'm also gonna show you that uh, feed. And if the camera will focus on the right spot for us, you guys can see that it's very easy for that round to feed up and right in. Maybe not what I'm doing with my finger. Come on, there we go. Magazine had to release. And with the cartridge in, looking for chamber support, we can see it appears to be supported all the way around. We can also tell when we get to the range if we fire some rounds and uh, take a look at the casings afterwards and find out if they've got any Glock smileys, if you will, from the uh, unsupported chamber section. I think we'll run this Liberty Civil Defense ammo when we test this gun. If I can remember to bring it. So I'm really curious how it's going to do. But as you can see, very nicely constructed guns, which is why they are not the cheapest. That plus they're made in Europe and then got to be imported, all of that. 
uh, for current pricing and availability on these, if you're curious about something like this, check that article. I've got links directly to the product spot um, in the article for all 13 of Grand Powers pistols that we have. Reassembly is the inverse of assembly. This is another time when I like to have this spot against my chest, so pardon me if I have to show you the guys that in the range video where you can actually see me. I'll see if I can do it tabletop here. You've got to pull all the way back and you'll feel the spot in the slide clear the rail spots and then you can seat it down and let it forward. That requires compressing the spring to its full strength, which is much easier to do if you have something to support the gun with. Can I do it without bracing on myself? All the way back and down. Yes, I did it. Everything back together. Check for function. Everything's good to go. So that's the LP380, your full size ish 380. Something that there's not a lot of on the market. So I think that's kind of cool. If you've not ever shot a double stack 380, they tend to be loads of fun because 380 is a very manageable round to begin with. And then when you've got a broader magazine for double stack causing a broader gun, they're really comfortable to shoot. One more thing before we go, let me show you those back straps. In an effort to show you guys the different back straps and how they can change hand grip, I'm gonna try doing some overlay of images as well as include how the hand fit works for each of them. This is the back strap that comes on the gun. They're not labeled. Why? Because, well, it really doesn't matter. It's about feel, right? And for me, the back strap that comes as included, my fingers wrap around, tuck up against the uh, overhang on the magazine there. I can get to the safety easy enough. Mag release is a bit of a reach on this side. And as you can see, if I reach my finger all the way out, I'm pushing the joint past the trigger so I can easily overreach this trigger as a reference point on the back side. My finger rests nicely on the takedown lever, which is what I've always used as sort of a memory point. Backstrap number two gives you a straighter angle back here, kind of squares off the tail here and makes it jut out a little bit. Gives sort of a glockish grip angle. In hand for me, number two starts to hit the meat of my palm a little bit, but has lifted, sort of rotated my hand up away from the magazine. Safety is easier to get to. Magazine release about there. Reach the trigger is about the same for me and my resting point yeah it's about the same on that side. So all it's done is sort of cocked the wrist forward a little bit. Maybe more of a Glock grip angle would be a way to describe that. Backstrap number three almost feels like it's reduced the grip circumference. You can see we're back to a rounded tail here and everything's very slim. As I grip onto it I'm now overflowing my pinky onto the magazine release. Uh, very easy reach of the controls. Mag release is a bit more of a reach for me. And somehow it feels like I've got a little bit less trigger reach, but not sure, but it, it certainly feels smaller diameter in here. In fact, I normally can't reach the tips of my fingers this far around the gun. So that's what number three does. And the fourth back strap is the largest. You can see we've added extra material to the tang and it juts out quite a bit. Also contours to be a little narrower there to allow the hand to fold over it. It's keeping my hand clear of the magazine. Safety reach is a little bit harder because I'm further back and the magazine release is out of reach for me. However, my trigger finger placement is about perfect. It sets the center of my pad right on that trigger by default and you can see it has moved me back a little bit on this side. So those are the four straps. Changing them out is pretty simple. You just gotta have something to pry in that gap there and push them off. Sorry, I can't show you, but it's YouTube rules. Anyways, we'll figure out which of these works best as a compromise for both Tia and I, and see you guys on the range. Thanks for watching.